Hey, I'm Alec, and today I'm gonna to show you how to succeed with supports, part one. So part one is gonna talk about specifically when you have supports that are the same material as the rest of your object. So it's PLA with PLA supports. So we'll get to dissolvable supports sometime in the future because there are a different set of rules when using those. Now 3D printers build from the bottom up. And when you're doing that, you can't just print in midair. Like these wingtips, they don't touch anything. If it were to start printing, it would just droop because there's nothing to support it. So as the 3D printing industry has advanced, so has automatically generated supports, where now you can just click a button, supports will be automatically generated, it'll print, and then you just snap them off. So you're able to print objects like these, even if you have a printer with one nozzle. Now, there are a lot of things that you'll want to fine tune depending on each printer, and usually the slice that comes with the printer should have all these settings correctly applied. But you still may want to find that maybe with a different material or a different layer height, you want to fine tune those settings. So let's take a look at what exactly each of those settings are, how they function, and what they do. Now, if you're going to design a part from the ground up, then there's some considerations into what exactly your part needs to look like so that you can either avoid not having supports or maybe create your own supports so that you don't need to use automatically generated ones. Take Phil, for example. Phil was specifically designed to not need supports no matter what size you're printing him in. So you can see that even though he has an overhang here, his knuckles look really clean. Even the gap between his legs or underneath all of these overhangs, there were never any supports here. And the reason that it turned out so cleanly is because he was specifically designed so that these overhangs don't go past 45 degrees. So once you tip over a little further to 50, 55, 60, it gets a little tougher for your printer to actually cool down that filament before it droops. So the layer cooling fan plays a big part and how those overhangs look and whether or not they need to be supported. Now, if you go between one point and another and you just have a straight line across, that's what's called bridging and sometimes even that doesn't need supports, but it all comes down to what your printer needs. So just wanna be careful that if you're designing something to not need supports, to keep the angle low at no more than 45, but if you're not designing the part and it's something you've downloaded, then here are some of the things you're gonna to need to look into to make it print better. So the next thing you wanna consider is whether or not you have support generated everywhere or just from the build plate. So let me move Phil aside and let's take a look at this bike pedal. When I printed this, I had it where the support was only generated from the build plate, which meant that this edge, this edge, and then in the hole here was the only place there was support, and there was no support within these spots. So I just had to rely on my layer cooling fan to make sure that this bridged properly, and it definitely saved on print time, because otherwise this entire cavity would have been filled with supports. So if I had support turned everywhere, then this would be well supported, so it may not droop nearly as much as before, but I'd have to fill in this entire gap with filament. So you can choose to not use support everywhere to save filament, or depending on your object, you may need to turn it on everywhere. Like Mercy's wings. These were printed in PLA with PLA supports, so this would have needed support everywhere in a lot of these spots just to keep it all together, because just from the build plate up, well, it wouldn't get in some spots like in the cross on her wing or some of the other details in here. So there's some times where supports everywhere are beneficial, but there are other times where by generating them, they're on internal surfaces that you won't be able to remove and maybe prevent you from fully using your part. So the next one is kind of big, and that's air gap or Z distance, depending on which slicer you're looking at. Now, air gap dictates the distance between your part and the top of the support. So if you have a small one, that means your overhangs will look cleaner, but you run the risk of the support adhering to it and you'll need to scrape it off. Too big means your overhangs may look a lot worse, but at least the supports come off and aren't just stuck to your part. So there's a fine balance trying to find what will make the parts easy to remove, whereas it's making the overhangs not look too ugly. There is a balancing act of figuring out just how big your air gap needs to be. Like when I print with a 0.9 layer height, I'll have a 1.8 millimeter air gap just to be sure that I can actually remove the, the supports. Otherwise, they just fuse. Whereas if I'm doing a 0.2 millimeter layer height, I use about a 0.4 millimeter air gap. So personally, I like to use a 
uh, an air gap that's twice my layer height, but you may wanna play with that depending on what material you're using, how good is your layer cooling fan, and a whole other set of factors that I can't all go into. And from there you have perimeter. And perimeter makes it so that your supports might have a little more structural integrity and they're not just going to extrude and just fall away because there's nothing underneath them. Perimeter makes it so that each block of support that is in your part is fully contained and enclosed. So that does mean that it will be harder to remove because you can't just take some pliers, reach in there and yank it all out. You will have to like jab through a skin and peel it away. Think of it as just auto-generated blocks with really poor infill and very few outside perimeters. So it's a very weak part, but it's still a bit more challenging than if you didn't have perimeters. So it is a balance of, do you want the support to, to, to hold together a lot better, but be a little harder to remove? Or are you okay if the support may have a little bit of droops here and there and not do as good of a job, but be pretty easy to get out of your part? So the next one is interface layers, and this one's pretty big too, because what it does is it takes your supports and make them behave a bit more like your printed part, because interface layers are essentially a roof over the top of your supports. So instead of just having a grid that goes back and forth and your printed part kind of droops over it as it's built up, instead the interface layers droop and then recover, meaning you have a much cleaner top surface to your supports and a much cleaner bottom surface of your printed part. Think of interface layers as how many top layers you want to go over the infill of your printed part. Interface layers are the same, except they go over your supports. And of all the support settings, this one's pretty minor, and that's whether or not you want to use lines or grids. Personally, I like to use lines because it gives me the opportunity to reach into them with some pliers and just yank them out, and it usually comes out in like a zigzag. Whereas grid, it provides a better support structure, but it takes longer, it uses more material, and it, it's just harder to remove once you print it because you don't have that same ability to reach into it and pull it out. Now it is helpful depending on what the actual shape of your part is, but if you just use lines, perimeters, and interface layers, that'll do essentially the same job as just grid and interface layers. So that about covers what you need to know with same material supports. So there's a lot of different things that you can go in and tweak and tune to make your 3D printer and use case work exactly the way you want them to. And one of my favorite things once I have everything all said and done and all tuned up is to be able to remove my part and have all the supports stay stuck to the build plate and not to my part. It's just such a satisfying feeling. What kind of supports do you like to use? Do you like to use lines, grids, interface layers? What kind of air gap, Z distance? I'd love to hear all of your settings in the comments down below. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you like that, give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all the big builds, how to's and troubleshooting guides I'll be working on. And don't forget, check out matterhackers.com to explore everything 3D printing and to join the community.